What's going on, everybody? Today we got some questions here for the Q and A, and we're gonna get right to those right away. First question, by the way, these questions were asked on my Instagram at Fruitarian with the hashtag AskTedCar. So let's get right into this. First question: How do you stay connected to your partner when you're so far away? That's a great, great question. Sarah and I live on opposite ends of Canada. She lives in Montreal. I live in British Columbia. That's like a five-hour flight away, seven hours travel altogether when you take the time to go to the airport and fly and then get from the airport to their house and that sort of thing. So we live about seven hours away. And it, it's tough because Sarah is the person who I want to spend most of my time with. If I'm all alone... That's cool. I enjoy my own company. And if I could bring someone into my own company and share that space with just one other person, Sarah would be that person. Sarah is that girl. So it's tough not being with her. But we uh, we chat on the phone. We do FaceTime. And um, we, we make that happen. And we, we set plans for the future. So we know we, we got things coming. I know I'm going to be, be seeing her for uh, sometime in December or January. So at least knowing that, it's coming up is, is a really good thing. Every day then that goes by is another day closer to seeing Sarah. But I'm tempted to just like go over there freaking tomorrow and just see her tomorrow. You know, I'm always tempted like that. But um, sometimes it's good to just stay put, keep getting work done, and then see her when it's time to see her. But the love, man, the love is real. The heart wants what it wants. And um, like I said, at times I'm just tempted to get up and go and, and fly over there or fly her out. But she's busy doing her work, and I'm busy doing my work. So this is the this is the life that we're living right now. In the future, hopefully, we'll spend a lot more time together. Uh, next question is: Being fruitarian, what do you eat when needing a break from the sweet? When you want something savory? Good question. Most of my food is sweet fruit, but at times I don't want sweet fruit. At times I want something like a tomato or a cucumber or a zucchini or avocado or some mushrooms or some daily green boost. So those are my options there. That's what I eat when I don't want something sweet. I go for the daily green boost. I go for cucumber, zucchini, mushroom, avocado, things like that. Are you ever going to move back to the tropics? maybe even if I do move back to the tropics I'm not sure if I'll live there full time or just temporarily this is the longest I've been back in Canada in like almost a decade I've been traveling so much to all these different places around the world like Costa Rica Panama Malaysia Thailand Hawaii etc 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 Ecuador um, really cool places really nice places but being back in Canada, there's something unique about being here. Like I have roots here. Like right here where I'm filming this video in, in, in at my cabin on the Okanagan Lake, this is where I have my earliest memories as a human being. I remember being three years old and have, seeing this big, big dump truck come by and laying the foundation for this cabin that I'm sitting in right now. So I got, I got roots here. I got all my memories here. And there's something to be said for that, something really special about that. Uh, I don't have my first childhood home anymore. We sold that. I don't even have the, the teenage home that I, that I really, truly felt I grew up in anymore. We sold that. So I don't have many of those. Um, I don't. I threw out all my belongings as well. I don't have any childhood belongings. The only like tie I have back to my childhood and like who I am at my roots, or at least who I think I am at my roots, is, uh, is here in Canada and here at this cabin. So the tropics are great for amazing abundance of fruit very affordable, dollar goes a long way, uh, people are really nice, um, the weather is fantastic, nice and warm, whereas Canada, it's a bit cold, the fruit isn't as good when it's not summertime, um, but it also has, you know, has my friends here, it has my, my childhood memories, and uh, it's it's got, it's, ser it's serving its purpose, I, I, you know, clearly I'm going through these waves, these phases where I've traveled a bunch, lived in the tropics, and now I'm in this phase where I'm in Canada right now, I don't know if I'll ever go back to the tropics full time, but I do want to eventually, like really soon, set up a place where I can be 365 days a year. And the easiest place to do that would be here in Canada, just um, logistically speaking in terms of um, you know, the laws and things like that. Not having to worry about a visa, not having to worry about 
any sort of paperwork, just boom, super convenient. I'm already in Canada, so stay in Canada. So we'll see. Is the 2019 Canada Fruit Fest going to be at the same venue as 2018? Yes. The 2020 festival will be at a different venue, but the 2019 Canada Fruit Fest is going to be at the same venue as last year, right here on the beautiful Okanagan Lake. Next question. By the way, if you want tickets for Canada Fruit Fest, you can get those at canadafruitfest.ca right now while they're at the lowest possible price. Next question is advice or support for Tim Sheaf? Yeah, I, I want to offer Tim Sheaf a couple of pieces of advice. Two pieces of advice from my homie Tim Sheaf. And before I give those bits of advice, I want to let people know that Tim is... I'm very proud of Tim. I'm very, very proud of Tim. I'm very proud of the, of the man he's becoming. If I were his parents, I'd be so proud of, of my child. Like Tim is like, he's a good dude. He's really, really cool. And he's, people don't know him in real life enough. I think people just see him on YouTube and they, and they, they, they see him as like this Tim the Celebrity. Because they've never met him, they never hung out with him. When you hang out with him, you realize he's, he's just a, he's a cool guy, man. And he, he's holistic. He, he thinks about a lot of things and um, he's very helpful, very encouraging, very positive. And yeah, he's got some far out there ideas and that's what makes him unique. Um, that's one of the things that makes him unique. There's many unique things about Tim, but that's one of the things that makes him unique. He's got some far out ideas that a lot of people just don't agree with, myself included. There's a lot of things he believes in or is exploring that I just, not, I'm just, I just don't believe in. But that's totally fine because perhaps I'm just closed off to a certain area and it, there's room for growth for me there to, to open up a bit more. Um, he's already opened my eyes to a lot of things, but... Um, I think he could teach me a lot more. But Tim, yeah, he's a very helpful guy. And um, he's accomplished a lot. And I don't think he's anywhere near close to accomplishing as much as he will in, in the next 20 years of his life. So currently right now, if you don't know, Tim, he just put out a video a couple days ago talking about how he went and ate some eggs and uh, some fish for the first time since being vegan. And he's just exploring what it means to be human in that regard. And I think that's, Freaking fine, man. That's freaking fine. You can go ahead and do that. Like it, it, it's as much. I, I, it, it's, it's hard to say it's his choice because really, like, whose choice was it when the animals were killed? Was it the animals' choice? No, the animals didn't have a choice. They were just killed. But now that the animals are dead, it is his choice to go and do that or not. And I have family members in my my family, my bloodline who eat meat. And I love my family members, who people I would kill for, people who I would die for, and they're eating animals. Right? So it's diet is just one aspect of life. And it's a big one. Don't get me wrong. It's a big one. I dedicate most of my life to, to optimizing diet and teaching people about diet because it's such a big aspect of life. And it's it goes beyond diet, right? It goes it goes into ethics. It goes into to, to what's right. And and it goes into uh, the the spirit the, the karma that, that you're leaving here on the planet that you're that you're embedding. So it's it's important to realize that just because someone is eating meat or eats a little bit of meat doesn't make them a bad person, doesn't make them insane. It just means that they're taking action in, in a certain way. And and it's important to keep the big picture in mind and understand that Tim is a is a human and he's he's making these choices because he's exploring what's possible. Now, I perhaps have empathy for Tim because early on in my vegan life, I also experimented with some raw milk. I experimented with some raw eggs. I experimented with some raw fish. And I didn't enjoy any of them. Like I drank the milk and I was like, I feel no difference. What's the point in drinking this milk? It's, there's no point. I ate the eggs and I'm like, it's just giving me gas. I don't feel any stronger, any better. And when I ate the fish, I just felt so sad. I felt so sad for the fish. And so I was like, okay, I'm going back to 100% veg. And when I tried those foods, I just tried them for a meal or two. It wasn't like I, I went off and stayed on them for a few months. It was just like I tried them for a meal or two. And I was like, it's not for me. Every time I come back to raw, every time I come back to veganism, it's always the path. And I think Tim is, is going to experience whatever he's going to experience. I can't, can't say what he's going to do for sure. But I have a feeling he'll come back to being vegan. That's my prediction. But I uh, can't say for sure. But my advice for him then would be, number one, to... Don't take shit from anybody. 
Don't take shit from anybody. There's gonna be people out there who are gonna bully you, Tim. There's gonna be people out there who are gonna call you crazy. There's gonna be people out there who are saying that you're just you're not um, you're not all there mentally. People are gonna be be making fun of you and saying all sorts of shit. Um, don't take shit from anybody. Just know who you are, know your worth, and just come back to doing what you love and providing value for the community. And that value can be in the form of showing people what it is you're going through. That's it. Just show people what it is you're going through. Maybe offer some bits of tips and advice, things like you do already. Just come back to that. Keep coming back to that. And um, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be good. You'll be all right. But just don't watch any hate videos that any people are making about you. There's going to be a ton of them. It's going to be tempting to click and read the comments. It's going to be tempting to click and watch the video that people are making about you. Don't do it. It's not worth it. You wouldn't walk into a room and have the room of people like shouting nasty things at you and, 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 and calling you uh, names and things like that. So why do it on, online as well? There's no point. And I know you read a lot of the comments, but in this, going through this phase, you know, and this phase could last a while. You could have months and months of, of backlash from people um, coming at you for this, even years. But just, I'd, I'd advise you from a homie to not read the comments and to not watch the videos that people make about you. It's just not worth it. In fact, when you refrain from reading the comments, when you refrain from watching the videos people make about you, you actually feel better about yourself. You have that self-discipline to not go there, to not indulge in that uh, self-hate, in that self-abuse. Because all those comments are, is you reflecting back at yourself, right? That's all these videos, anyone making a hate video about you, Tim, that's actually you making a hate video about yourself. It, we're, we're all reflections of each other. So just don't indulge, don't go there. Just focus on that love, focus on the freedom, focus on providing value for people by keep doing what you do best. The second bit of advice I'd give you is to not think diet is going to cure everything. Like, go beyond diet. And I know you already do this to a large extent, but just remember that if you're feeling some kind of way in your body and you're feeling not optimal, you're feeling subpar, whatever, you know, diet can only be so good. Right? You can only eat so much, so many calories in a day from, from so many so much variety of food. Let's say you even let's say your variety was was holistic. Let's say you did have uh, a bit of fruit each day, a bit of vegetables each day, a bit of animal products each day. Let's say you had a really small amount of animal products, a good amount of veggies and a, and a, and a good amount of, of organic fruit. And you took whatever supplements you want to take as well, just small amounts. Right? Just to cover all your bases. Let's say you just adopted the most holistic diet ever. There's still going to be times when you're not feeling good. There's still going to be times when you're when you're when you're hurting inside. There's still going to be times when when you're having uh, issues. Right? Diet isn't a cure all. Diet is a cure most. It's a preventative most, but not prevent all. Prevent like absolutely everything. Other things you can do to optimize your your life and the way you're feeling is engage in a certain relationship with someone. It could be a coach, it could be a therapist, it could be a girlfriend or a homie. Just engage in a, in a certain relationship. Another thing could be to get more sleep. And, and I, I say that, I don't, I, I don't just mean more sleep. I mean like get to bed by 8 or 9 p.m. every night. 9 p.m. every night, right? And then don't get out of bed until 6 a.m. the next morning. So 9 p.m. and then 6 a.m. And just be super consistent with that. And don't use smartphone or any sort of internet with blue light after 8 p.m. Just ease into the evening and then sleep, sleep deeply. Make sure you're not eating past 4 p.m. That way you're not getting up to pee throughout the middle of the night. And you just get a much deeper rest. Optimize your sleep. Wake up at 6 with a good, strong meditation. Start your day off with meditation. Write down what you're grateful for. Right? Get focusing on what you're grateful for. And write out your goals. And then go on through the rest of your day. Do what you got to do. By doing this, you're structuring your day. And you're structuring your life in a way that you don't need to think about too many possibilities and, and get yourself into any any uh, any deep ruts. You can prevent most ruts. You can stay focused on what you're grateful for. You can have a calm state of mind. You can make sure you're getting getting enough sleep, and you can make sure that you're you're focused on your goals. You know what you gotta do. So that I'd say go beyond diet. Your diet's already good enough, bro. You're already clean enough, and. Uh, there's, there's a lot more to life than diet. You already know that, but I just want to remind you. It's a good reminder. It's a good reminder for myself as well. I'm making these videos for myself. So next uh, question is, um, how are your teeth? Any issues? I've noticed that there are some fruitarians that have shocking teeth. I don't know if that's because bad hygiene 
from poor diet or it's detox. Any tips on how to prevent teeth issues? Yeah, for sure. I have a fruitarian friend named Joe. He's a dentist and he's never had any teeth issues his entire life. And I asked him, how is that possible? How have you never had a single cavity? And you know what he said? Guess what he said? And he ate a ton of candy, ton of candies growing up. The reason he's never had any cavities is because he keeps his teeth clean. He brushes three to four times a day. He rinses with water between meals and coconut oil in the morning or in the evening. And he flosses five to six times a day. Dude flosses like people smoke. People go out for a smoke, he's out there flossing. People take a little smoke break, he takes a little floss break. He brushes three times a day. And he flosses five to six times a day. And he rinses his mouth at least a couple times a day. His teeth are always clean. And he says, you can't have cavities if there's nothing on your teeth. You can't have cavities if there's nothing on your teeth. You can only have cavities if there's stuff left on your teeth. Right? The bacteria go in there, they eat that stuff, they poop out, and the acidic, uh, the poop is acidic, and it, it erodes your teeth. So that would be my number one tip, and my only tip. Keep your teeth clean. You should be able to walk into the bathroom or look into a mirror at any point throughout the day and never see anything on your teeth. If there's something on your teeth, get it off. It's likely going to cause a cavity. And the reason I th see a lot of fruitarians, myself included, when I first got into the diet, having some cavity issues is because we just figured, oh, we're eating the most natural diet. We'll do what we would do out in nature. And that's not brush our teeth. Tim Sheaf says, if we were designed to brush our teeth, we'd have a brush on our finger. So a lot of people have that mentality. They think, oh, I'm not going to brush. And I had that mentality. I, in fact, for the first two or three years of being raw vegan, I ate so much fruit from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I ate fruit all day long. I didn't brush. If I did brush, I brushed with just water. I got a ton of cavities from that. But now, since talking with Joe and since doing some research, it's become so obvious. Keep your teeth clean. You're not going to get any cavities. You, how could you possibly get a cavity on a tooth that's nothing, when nothing, nothing is on it? Right? The, the cavity, the tooth gets cavity because there's stuff on it. and The bacteria eat that stuff. And when they poop out, the poop is acidic and it erodes the teeth. So keep the teeth clean, keep floss between your teeth, brush three times a day, and you'll be good to go. The next question is, what do you feel has been the biggest factor in your growth or improvement slash success? I know what I want for the most part. I'm very goal oriented. A lot of people don't have goals. You could give them a call. You say, hey, what's up? They're like, oh, hey, just, um, you know, um, going to work and doing this and doing that, don't do what I normally do. They don't have a, they don't have a goal, they're not working on anything. Like, what sort of projects are you working on? They're like, ah, oh, I don't really have anything planned right now, I'm just kind of taking it day by day. Like, well, what, what would be a goal of yours? Like, what, what kind of goal do you want to set? Oh, I just want to be happy. Happiness is a byproduct. It can't be the goal in and of itself. Happiness is the end product. Happiness is a result of doing what it is you love. And the goal can be Let's say the goal is uh, you want to start a fruit festival. You want to have a fruit festival with 200 people there in Canada. Speaking for myself here. That was the goal last year. I want to have a fruit festival. Happiness is the byproduct of working on that festival. Happiness is being at that festival with all those people. If I just say my goal is strictly happiness, well, I need something to do to actually get that happy, happiness. Right? I need, need the habits in place as well. So by having a goal... Let's say your goal is to run 5K under 20 minutes. Happiness is the training. Happiness is the running. Happiness is attempting to run 5K under 20 minutes. And uh, I think a lot of people don't have goals. They don't have a target to go for. And they just, they're all over the place. And they're floundering. They're confused. They're not sure what to do. And that's, that's the state a lot of pe people are in right now. The state of the internet. A lot of people don't know what to do. There's so many options on the internet. There's so many tabs you can click on and links you can click on. It's hard for people just to put it all on pause and say, this is my goal. This is what I'm going to work on every day. And uh, nothing's going to stop me. So I think the biggest factor in my growth and improvement and success has been setting goals and being clear on what it is I'm working on. And then asking people for help. Like giving people a call and talking about those goals. It's really good to team up with people. You don't need to do it all alone as well. That's something that differentiates me and other people. I team up with other people. I do stuff with other people a lot. I love to collaborate. And um, a lot of people think they need to do it all by themselves. You don't. If you want to team up with something, hit me up. Let me know. I might be down to collaborate with you. 
How do you evaluate all the science when it comes to raw versus cooked? Many seem to decide what they want and follow the guru who promotes that diet. It can be genuinely confusing out there. Great question. Science is cool, but at the end of the day, it comes down to how do I feel? So if someone says scientifically, without a doubt, that apples are really healthy, and I eat an apple, and I feel quite good after eating that apple, I could easily say, I feel great from this apple, and it's clear why. Look at the science, right? But then you have things like people saying, oh, well, this cooked food is scientifically proven to be healthy. Look at all these facts. And then I eat that cooked food, and I feel subpar. I feel my vibration lower. I feel my, my vitality lower. I'm going to say, well, that's cool that there's science there, but my feeling doesn't back up that science. And I want to live my life in a state of good emotion. I want to live my life in a way that allows me to feel my best most of the time. And so when it comes to eating certain foods, whether they're raw or whether they're cooked, whether they're backed up by science or whether they're backed up by subjective feeling, I want to eat the food that allows me to feel my best. And for me, what I found is that eating a raw fruit-based diet allows me to feel my best. That's it. That's it, in a nutshell, in a coconut shell. When I drink coconut water, I feel amazing. I don't need the science to back it up. When I eat certain cooked foods, like um, rice, I feel like S-H-I-T, bro. I don't care if the science backs up and says, oh, it's whole grain and this and that. Don't care. For me, I find myself addicted to that stuff. I can't stop eating it. And I, I want to stop eating it, but I can't, I can't stop. I just keep eating it, and it's just, ugh, I don't want that lifestyle anymore. Ask me the last time I ate rice. I couldn't tell you. It's been so many years. So I don't care what the science that backs it up. You can find studies, and you can find articles online that back up any sort of food, whether it's eggs. Eggs are claimed like the healthiest food on the planet by some people. Raw fish are claimed by the, some people to be the healthiest food. Uh, red meat, healthiest food in some people's opinion. The science to back it up, too. And there's other science that says it's cancer causing. There's other science that says it's, you know, eggs are not even considered a safe food. They can't legally say safe on the, on the label because they're not safe. And there's other foods talking about fruit being super healthy and other uh, research, researchers saying that fruit is unhealthy. It all comes down to how you're feeling, what kind of results you're getting. It does for me anyway. That's, that's how I go about it. So yeah, there's a lot of confusion out there, but I, I it's cut right through it. I blast right through it. Tunnel vision with how do I feel? That's my number one criteria. How do I feel when I eat this food? How do I feel when I eat this? How do I feel when I eat a lot of this food? Because you can eat a little bit of something and feel all right. You can eat a little bit of, of any food and feel all right. You can even take a little bit of any drug and feel all right. But you can't take a little bit of acid, I guess. LSD is quite potent in extremely small amounts, but... Um, she yeah, had these people microdose acid. So you can even microdose acid, LSD, the most potent of all drugs. And you're going to be all right. You're not even going to feel it. Right? It's, it's in the amounts that we're talking. So do you feel amazing eating one cashew? Maybe. You can, you can probably still feel fine. Do you feel amazing eating a bag of cashews? Hell no. Nobody feels amazing eating, eating after a whole bag of cashews. Nobody. So... Keep that in mind. And when it comes to fruit, do you feel amazing eating, eating a little bit of fruit? Probably do. Do you feel amazing eating fruit all day long or at least in your four-hour eating window? Yeah, you probably do as well. Make sure it's top quality ripe fruit and you'll, you'll be all right. All right, next question. What advice can you give those people who want to start being healthy? What advice can you give for those people who want to start being healthy? My advice is to find people who are, well, define healthy. You got you to define healthy for yourself. What is healthy? A lot of people think healthy is being fit. A lot of people think healthy is being skinny. A lot of people think healthy is being disease-free. A lot of people think being healthy is being happy. So find out what health is to you. Clearly define that. And look for people who have those characteristics. Look for, look for people who are already healthy in your eyes. And look at what they're doing. Diet is just one thing, right? I've said that before. A lot of really healthy people, they just meditate a lot. A lot of other really healthy people, they do a lot of fitness. A lot of other really healthy people, they focus on eating a raw vegan diet. So there's tons of aspects of life that, that we got to uh, factor in here and not just look at diet, look at all the areas and find out what they're doing in all these areas. So I'd recommend uh, a good place to start 
would be to look at your own life right now and identify the unhealthy habits that you have. You, everyone knows unhealthy habits they have. For me, sometimes I incessantly check social media. That's an unhealthy habit. For me, I another unhealthy habit I have. Um, I tried to eliminate all the unhealthy habits I have, but uh, so it might be hard to think of one. But this is a good challenge. So I check social media too often. Another unhealthy one is um, sometimes I'll worry about the future. Another unhealthy habit I'll have is um, like all the diet habits. I've kind of eliminated all those unhealthy habits. I'm pretty sure I'm trying to look around, and think if there are any reminders. Uh, this is interesting. I'm drawing a blank when coming up for unhealthy habits. And I don't even consider myself necessarily the healthiest person in the world. I consider myself one of the healthiest people in the world, but not the healthiest. Um, I guess an unhealthy habit I have is I eat fruit with sprays on it, a conventionally grown fruit. So I guess that's an unhealthy habit. I, I would ideally like to be eating a diet with no sprays whatsoever. But there you go. Those are some tips. Um, and just overall, like look at people who are living the life you want to live and just do what they're doing or at least take their advice with grains of salt. How's that? Last question here. I have two big groups of people wanting to come to the Canada Fruit Fest, four adults and three kids. Can you let me know the cost for kids so we can plan and hopefully encourage other families to join us too? Cool. Well, kids 10 and under come absolutely for free to Canada Fruit Fest. So if you want to head over to CanadaFruitFest.ca, you can grab your tickets right now at the lowest possible price and see all the info there. Kids 10 and under come free. So bring your, bring your family. We love kids. I love kids. Kids are like, I can't wait to have kids. I'm, I'm really looking forward to having some kids in the future. And so I wanted to make the Canada Fruit Fest a really kid-friendly event because I think, you know, kids come there. They have a really great time. It's going to it's gonna make an impact on their life forever. And um, they really don't need all that much anyway, so... They won't, they won't be too much of a cost for us. So anyways, uh, I think that's it. Just refresh this uh, photo, see if there's any more comments that popped up while we're doing the video. Check, 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 check. Oh yeah, three more questions just came up. Um, what exactly are oxalate crystals which are high quantities in kale? This is why I need to avoid kale. Any input? Kale releases I'm not sure if this is oxalate crystals, but I know kale releases, and all greens do this, kale releases, if you have too much kale, too much spinach, too much collard, whatever, your body's going to start reacting to it negatively. It's, it's the defense mechanism in the plant to say, hey, stop eating us, you're going to kill the entire crop. Because if you walk up to a field of kale and you start eating a ton of it, the kale's going to be like, yo, you're going to wipe us out, bro. So it starts releasing these toxic compounds. And when you start eating them, you're going to feel like crap. It's going to taste like crap. Collard does this too. A bunch of greens do this. It's their defense mechanism. Fruit doesn't need to do that because fruit wants you to eat it because fruit wants you to plant the seed. You can eat as much fruit as you bloody well want. Fruit just wants those seeds spread far and wide. But when you go up to spinach or kale or any vegetables, you're going to kill them if you eat them all. So they start releasing some, some toxic compounds. Uh, so keep that in mind. Just have, have, have a big variety of, um, of greens if you're going to go for greens. Next question is, are you still living the minimalist lifestyle? Yes, I am. I have expanded a bit with my camera gear. I'd like to get more down to minimalism. Again, I want to get a smaller camera and um, get rid of some technology things I have, techno te technological things I own, bits of technology, like extra cameras and things like that, extra microphones. But I'm still living in a, uh, in a, in a minimalist lifestyle. Everything I own used to fit into a backpack, a carry-on backpack, pretty small backpack now everything i own fits into a bit of a bigger backpack and my camera bag so i still consider myself minimalist but way too many way too many items i want to get down to like under 30 things again that would be sweet uh, last one thoughts on overt fats do you need them to feel satisfied as a fruitarian cool question this came in actually three seconds after i refreshed the uh page so good timing overt fats are things like avocados nuts and seeds coconut meat olives, durian, ackee, uh, olives and oil and things like that. Anything that's overtly fatty because all foods have fat in them, small amounts of fat, even bananas, even lettuce, but overt fats are high in fat. And overt fats are great for making things like guacamole, making things like salad dressing, making things like sauces and dips, 
be great for making coleslaw. Mm, I'm salivating just thinking about it. Super, super good. Overt fats allow you to feel really heavy and really dense and really strong. So they're great for, for building muscle and size in the gym. However, they come with a, a downside. And that downside is they are mucus forming. They allow the body to create mucus. And if you don't mind having a lot of mucus in your system, then overt fats are a good option for you. If you want to be totally mucusless, if you want to be totally mucus free, then you want to avoid the overt fats. You want to stay low fat. You want to stay on the juicy fruits. You want to stay on the on the high water content fruit. So I, I don't think that you absolutely need overt fats, but I think that they are an amazing staple food. Avocados specifically and coconut meat, if you have access to that. Amazing staple food for helping you stay raw, especially in the winters when it can get a bit cold. So for me, my staple foods for the longest time have been avocados, dates, and bananas. Not in any particular order. I would just have them whenever, however much I wanted. Um, when I started doing intermittent fasting, when I started eating between 12 and 4 p.m., avocados really helped a lot getting in enough calories. However, since being here at my cabin, I've been completely overt free. I've been mostly eating apples, bananas, and dates, daily green boost, things like this, some, some cherry juice. Um, what else have I been having? I've been keeping it really simple. Some, some spices, some ginger. Um, raisins, uh, prunes, dried prunes, so things like this. Completely overt free. And I've been fine. I've found the mucus that I normally have in the morning is a lot less. And now instead of waking up and going like horking up big loogies, like oh, there's just nothing that really comes up anymore. So that's pretty cool. But I think that if you want to use overt fats, use them to build up size, use them to build up muscle. And then when it's time to cut, when it's time to trim down, then get off the overts and just you'll lean right out. It'll be super, super easy to, to lose weight. Um, so that's that. I think that was it. That's the end of the questions. Let's check here. Yeah, that's it. Those are the last of the questions. So thank you very much for everyone who asked the question. I really appreciate that. If uh, you want to come to the Canada Fruit Fest, then you can head over to canadafruitfest.ca and find out all the information there. I'd love to see you there, August 9th to the 12th. And if you want to take an online 30-day raw food challenge, I will teach you everything I know about eating a raw vegan diet via the link in the description below. So check that out if you want uh, more info on that. All right, much love. Peace out. Have a great day. Yeah, how long? For two minutes? 30 minute? seconds each. 30 seconds, okay. Two rounds. Okay. And we start now. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, we're in the finals. Okay. Yeah. See you later tonight. Music starts at what time, Quinn? Five. Five, Five p.m. You'll be like before headliner. This is main event. Okay, dope. <laughs> See you all there. Thanks. I'm supposed to look at the camera, right? I keep wanting to look at you. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, to do that. For like yeah. That's my answer to every question. Sick. Sick, dude. Actually, that'd be funny if you just to answer that the whole time. If I if I don't know what to answer, then I'll answer with you. Yeah. <laughs> Like the first few days, everyone's like got this tension, like I came here alone. And then by the end of the festival, people are just like fully themselves and embraced. And I think that's what the community provides. How's everybody doing? It's a very, very cool place. We, we have not ate this much fruit in a long time. I feel like we're a little bit high on the fruit. Who else is feeling a little bit high on the fruit? All right, all right, all right, let's do this. I notice about the people at this festival in particular is that everybody is very open-minded. Everyone is really loving and caring. I can feel their good hearts. Everyone is very welcoming and everyone is so eager to learn and become a better version of themselves. Yeah, I've met so many new people at this festival. There's so many cool people from all over the world. I know a lot of people I'm going to stay in contact with after the food festival. Really just it's all about the people coming together and just enjoying fruit life and everything beautiful that comes with that. I think that after I leave this festival, my life is gonna change because I've been re-inspired to consume more fresh food, raw food, and to be, to be really consistent with that um, because I feel much better now and it's definitely rejuvenated me. At a fruit festival, you can expect to be surrounded by a welcoming, happy community group of people. You can expect to feel supported in your lifestyle, in your journey, and in your goals. You can expect to eat a lot of delicious fruits and raw veggies. You can expect to meet so many interesting people and hear from amazing speakers, learn tons of information and spend a great weekend or just a few days out in nature. If you've never attended a fruit festival before, um, they are like camp. You get to come and experience an amazing event with a bunch of people. You get to experience the raw vegan diet. You get to eat a lot of fruit, 
uh, go to a lot of activities. You can learn from the presenters, connect with new friends, meet with old friends, and enjoy the lifestyle. There are a lot of great uh, presenters here, a lot of really good information, a lot of good vibes, a lot of good energy, uh, a lot of love being spread, and uh, yeah, really good times. Lots of great stuff happening at Fruit Festival. There are health empowering lectures and workshops. There's plenty of raw vegan food, uh, lots of laughs and social time. There's usually great physical activities, exercise classes, and time to hang out in the lake and just socialize. Music, dancing, uh, I've even heard a little bit of poetry and people uh, playing on the swings, a playground. You get to be a, a big kid. I mean, I think the, the biggest thing with attendees is that, you know, when people meet other people and like maybe you meet somebody at, an, at a fruit event that has the same exact health condition you had but then the person you meet they're they're over there as they got over they they've healed because of the diet and then then now you know you like hey that person did it I can do it too so I think like you know motivation is, is really huge because we're also unfortunately isolated in this uh, internet age and you're watching this on YouTube or some other kind of video streaming network <laughs> Well, I believe that the people that come to attend the festival tend to be people that are on a, on a journey of personal growth. Uh, they're self-reflective people. They take responsibility and when, when, when something's happening in their, their life, they realize that they need to make a change. And that's the difference between some of the people that come here and some of the people that are not attending is that they're sick, but they don't maybe want to change. They don't see it as their responsibility to change or they don't even realize that they can make a change. Whereas people that have already come on this path to here, they've realized for a start that the, the world out there that we are presented with is not quite as it seems. That the answers that were given by the conventional institutions and the government at times often aren't the right answers or aren't the best thing for you in your life and definitely not the best thing for your health. So they've already realized that like, I'm going to need to start making some decisions for myself. I'm going to need to do my own research. I'm going to need to do my own growth. I'm going to need to find these niche communities of people that are with, and the leaders and the, the experts that can help me and help me with the different aspects of my life. So what you find is people here are looking for not just growth in terms of their health and diet. They tend to be looking for growth in every area of their life and they want to expand. And, and so many people here believe that they can change their life and they can change the world. And those are kind of the same thing as well. If you change yourself, you automatically change the world around you. There's a lot of presentations um, where people who are new to this way of eating and living can come and learn and absorb lots of information. And there's also a lake nearby and it's a beautiful location. So there's, you're immersed in nature basically. Um, everybody was tenting at this event, which was especially sweet that we're like fully immersed here. Um, there's an abundance of raw food, which is beautiful and always arranged for us. Um, lots of connection, um, like people connecting outside of the presentations and then the ability to ask any questions and just receive advice and su suggestions from other people um, and friendships that you wouldn't have if you didn't come here. Um, that. <laughs> There's an openness to the people that attend these festivals. I mean, just being able to look deeply into somebody's eyes or share a long hug or dive deep into your personal vulnerabilities and feel 100% accepted, it's amazing. You can tell the people who are attracted to events like this have done the inner work on themselves and that exudes from them and enhances our connection. So I just love the the intimate nature of the connections between the people here and the acceptance. Um, yeah, what I've noticed about the people here is that they're just really genuine, you know, they're really chill and um, they're really open and welcoming. They have a lot of love. They're very accepting, non-judgmental, and everybody's here to help each other and support each other and grow together. And um, it just feels like um, like, uh, like another family that I never knew about.
Hey man, if you're not following me on Instagram yet, you definitely want to do that. I post some cool stuff from my life, showing you how to live as a fruitarian, how to live as a raw vegan, how to make those gains, right? I'll show you all that on the Instagram, man. If you're going to be on Instagram, you might as well be consuming the good stuff. So follow fruitarian on Instagram and you won't regret it. All right. I'll see you soon.